Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Haley. Today I'm really excited because we're doing something a little bit different for my channel. I mean, it's not. We're gonna be swatching lipsticks, which is very normal for my channel, but I have been on the hunt for some original Revlon Super Lustrous lipstick shades because I did some research a while back on some of the oldest lipstick shades that are still available and Revlon has it seems like the most and it's really cool if you look up the history of these and just how long they've lasted the test of time I will say I have been on a hunt for these though it seems like they're becoming less and less readily available I found one at one store on the island I got one on Amazon and I found three more at a different store so it just seems like they're becoming harder and harder to find but I did find five of them and so I'm really excited I love history I love like classic glamour I don't know what it is I'm especially fascinated by like the 40s and 50s most of the shades that we have I think are from the 50s so I'm really really excited to try these on for you today and just you know see them for myself I have worn a few of these a couple times but three of them I've never even opened until now so I am really really excited so the oldest shade that I was able to find is from 1951 and it is called Love That Red. So all of these are from the Super Lustrous line, which is actually not the original, original formula of these. I believe it was just the Lustrous and then they came out with the Super Lustrous later, but the actual shades are the same. So this first one, Love That Red, this looks gorgeous. I feel like it's coming off a little bit more orangey red in the camera than it is in real life, but let's swatch it here this is really pretty actually this is kind of kind of a pinky corally kind of red now if I were not doing this for a video I probably would use a lip liner with these because this super lustrous you can probably tell from the name they are extremely extremely creamy and they're not gonna stay in the lip line super, super well, I don't think, without a lip liner. So I would add a lip liner to it, but this is looking beautiful. This is pretty, this is like, it's funny. Some people don't think of reds as everyday. I think that reds can be everyday, and this is one that actually seems like it almost could be an everyday kind of red shade. It's really pretty, it just seems like because, it seems like it could go with a lot of different outfits, if that makes sense, like a lot of different colorways because of the shade that it is. Super, super pretty. Definitely, like I said, creamy, super shiny, and beautiful. I'm normally one that likes matte matte lips. I'm very much a matte lip person, but I love that I have these and if I find more, I would like to collect more of them because I feel like it's such a piece of history. And I do think there's a time and place for lipsticks like this. This is definitely an everyday and I think part of me feeling like it's an everyday also has to do with the formula, which you could say for all of these because it's more creamy. I don't know, it just seems a little more effortless and so you could grab it a little bit faster and just kind of go. Like I said, I think with a shade like this you do need a lip liner though so that would take a little bit more time but the creaminess of it is definitely more everyday leaning. Definitely more like corally pinky kind of red which I don't own many shades like this so I'm really excited. 1951. Can you imagine you guys like just throwing this on in 1951 going about your business like my dad was alive my mom was not in 1951 so it's just, it's just crazy to me that, that something so beautiful like this can be around for so long. So I'm sorry, I'm such a nerd about this kind of stuff. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know like modern makeup is cool. Not always necessarily my thing. Like I'm definitely an old Hollywood glam type of makeup person. I feel very fortunate that I think it looks good on me when I do it the right way, if that makes sense. Okay, move on Haley, move on. I'm just gonna be taking these off with a makeup wipe to make things a little bit easier. You guys, I was so excited when I found these. I thought it was gonna be a really slow process finding a, a handful to do a video, so I'm really excited that it has happened. So, I just, I love lipstick. You guys know, this also came out in 1951. This is certainly red. They all have the same type of packaging because they're all that super lustrous line. This one is definitely a deeper kind of red. Beautiful. Oh yeah, this is more of like a still pinky but more leaning on the berry pinky side. 
Oh yeah, you can already tell, not as bright as the, the first one. And actually on my skin tone and my lips, it's actually leaning more towards a true red. And that's the interesting thing about lipsticks is like on different skin tones, it can even look different like on your actual lips than on your hand because your lip color also comes through a little bit. This is beautiful. This is definitely more of an everyday kind of red shade for me. The corally would be a specific kind of moment that I'd be having, but these are the types of shades that I wear on a normal basis when I wear red lipsticks. While we're taking this off, I'm really curious why these are harder to find. I don't know if they're slowly phasing them out. I hope not. When you look on lists of traditional Revlon lipstick shades, a lot of them are coming out now and saying like, oh, this is no longer available when you look on different lists. So I don't know why they're phasing them out. If if I were in charge of like a makeup company, I would keep those classic shades because I feel like it's just, it's part of your history and you can still find a way to have those shades in your new formulas. I actually think a company that has done really, really well with that is MAC. And I know I talk MAC to death and I just ordered their new matte line, which the perfect example of this, they have a brand new matte lipstick line and I I think they're phasing out the old line. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think they are, but they're keeping every single shade from the original line. And that is what I think is so innovative is that MAC will come out with their different formulas, but keep their classic shades within those formulas or change it just a little bit. Like for example, they have Velvet Teddy in their original matte lipstick shade, but then in their Powder Kiss formula, they have Teddy 2.0, which is similar, a little different, but similar. I have a whole video on it that I can link below. They do that. And like the newest MAC lipsticks that I reviewed on my channel, which are the Locked Kiss Slim lipsticks, those have some shades, for example, Ruby True, is ruby woo but in this new formula so i think that's really really smart and if i owned a makeup brand i feel like I, that's what i would do too because your classic shades are classic for a reason and people get so sad when they go away unless your plan is like to bring them back so they have a really good comeback later which i don't know if maybe that is the plan but that's just what i would do our next lipstick came out in 1952 and i will say that this shade in my research seems like one that they have brought back a few different times and they've recreated campaigns with this specific lipstick and I know that there is also nail polishes to match this as well and I know they've done that with a few of their shades. It's funny, I don't think that Revlon nail polishes are as popular the way that they were like when I was younger and even before that because I remember when I was really young, Revlon was like one of the big nail polish shades and I just don't think see that anymore for some really weird reason. I don't know why they're not, they don't seem to be marketing that line anymore as much, but it's really cool if you look up the history of Fire and Ice. This is a really interesting shade. This is one I've tried, and what's interesting about it is that when they formulated it, they wanted it to have both warm and cool tones so that it could go with, again, a variety of different outfits. It's a very unique shade, and same thing with their nail polish shade as well. That's also Fire and Ice. So that is really unique. Normally lipsticks are either cool or warm or just neutral. It's very rare that it has both warm and cooler tones in it. So this one is very, very unique and very bold and very just very cool. Again, very like classic kind of shade. Interesting, right? Definitely more orangey when I'm looking at it on my hand. But again, it does have cooler tones in there as well. It's very interesting. Definitely a bolder red, like this one, people are gonna stop and notice it. I think especially if you have a deeper skin tone than me, this one really is gonna pop and that's what they wanted. I mean, this came out in, did I even say 1952? So just imagine in 1952, what a knockout this kind of shade is, you know? And you can just picture people asking like, oh, what shade is that? And you're like, oh, it's it's Revlon Fire and Ice. And it was really popular. So a lot of women wore it, which is cool. So love this one. But again, definitely this one for me would be more of a, I'm in a specific mood to wear this kind of shade because it is so, I mean, reds are already 
more noticeable, but then you get a shade like this and it's like boom in your face. It is really pretty though. And I feel like all of these are going really well with the shirt that I'm wearing. Actually, it's a dress. It's an Ugg dress that I got from Ross and it's originally $88 and I got it for like 15, but it's super comfy. It's like almost one of those t-shirt kind of dresses, but it cinches at the waist. It's really pretty, but I feel like these red lipsticks look really good with it. So love that one too. Love the history on this one. Okay, only two more you guys. This next one came out in 1953. And when I found this one, all the other ones were in the red section. This one was actually in the berry section. So I'm excited to see, cause it looks like a red on the little, you see that at the bottom, the little sticker, it, it looks red to me. But then when I was looking, I was like, oh, this is in berry. So I'm excited to see what this looks like. Again, same packaging. And this is called cherries in the snow, but I'm gonna swatch it on my hand. Okay, yeah. This is for sure a berry. This is so pretty. This is definitely like a pinky berry kind of shade. I love it. I used to be really into shades like this. They were actually my favorite back in like, I'd say 2017 and 2018. I really, really loved berry tones. Okay, I'm excited. Oh yeah. Wow, isn't this beautiful? You know what I like about this? The reason I've stopped wearing a lot of berry tone shades is that a lot of them really, really have purple undertones. This one, it does have a purple undertone, but it's not looking like it's purple on my lips. I feel like a lot of berry tone lips just look purple on my skin tone. And this one I think just looks a little bit more pink, which I think is really, really flattering and really pretty. This would look really pretty on some deeper skin tones as well. But I love that this isn't too purple looking on my lips. This is, yeah. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I definitely would reach for this a lot. I'm liking this a lot more than I thought I would. This is gorgeous. I'm excited. I'm gonna have to figure out which one I wanna wear at the end and maybe use it with a lip liner. Oh, so definitely a warning that this one stains your lips, which actually could be super pretty if you put it on and wiped it off. If I'd known, I might've saved this one for last, except it wouldn't be in the right year order. And you know what, you guys, I have my MAC lipsticks in a very special lipstick acrylic holder. And I actually put these ones in there too, because they're really special to me too, because of the history of okay. them. We're on the last one, which is good because my lips are starting to dry out. I can feel it. This next one is a pink. And this one came out in 1955, so it's definitely the newest. It's called Love That Pink. So again, same packaging, definitely a pink. I'm excited to swatch it on my hand and see what shade of pink it is. Oh, this is still looking kind of red to me though. It's a pink, but it's not like a Barbie pink or anything. I feel like it still is leaning a little bit more on the red side. Interesting, we'll see on my lips though, because as we've seen a couple times, it's different when you actually swatch it on your lips. Yeah, I feel like it's hard with that stain of the last one underneath. Yeah, this is a pink, but it definitely has like a red undertone. Wow, what a unique pink shade. I feel like they don't make pink shades like this much. When I think pink, I think a lot cooler toned and lighter. This is a warmer toned kind of pink. It's really pretty though. And actually this one might be the one that goes best with my dress today. So it might be the one that I keep on. Wow, this is really pretty. This is gorgeous. This is unlike any shade I have. That is so interesting. And then here's the swatch. Notice it's looking a little bit more red on my skin tone and on my lips with again, that kind of berry stain underneath a little bit, but, and it's very spring summery. I could see this one as one that I would reach for a lot in the spring and summer. Cause it's like that pop of color. It is pink, but it's not a red, which sometimes people associate with Christmas and stuff like that, which again, I wear reds all year round. Wow. wow. I feel like this is really hard. Okay. Now I think I might swatch these on my hand one next to the other so that we can kind of see how they look side by side. Cause right now I don't even know which it would be my favorite right now. And let's see. Okay. So here are all of the swatches. They're gorgeous. In order, we have Love That Red, which is more on the corally kind of side. And then we have Certainly Red, which is more of a true red with a bluer kind of undertone. And then we have Fire and Ice, which has warm and cool tones, very unique shade. Cherries in the Snow is probably the most obvious one because it's definitely more mauve -y. And then we have Love That Pink here at the bottom. 
It's really hard to choose my favorite, you guys, um, because I like them all for different reasons. I feel like certainly red might be my favorite because it's more of an everyday kind of red shade that I would reach for because it's more, it has that more of a blue undertone. A second would probably be Cherries in the Snow, which it totally surprised me because again, I haven't been reaching for berry tones as much anymore, but I love that it's more of a pink with purple instead of like just looking super purple on my lips. I feel like it's really pretty and stands out, but it's still like muted enough that it's just gonna look really pretty. Third might be the one that I'm wearing right now, the Certainly Pink. I love that it it is a little more of a red leaning pink. I just feel like we just don't see that very much anymore. Shades like this, it's, it's really, really pretty. And I feel like this, because it has both the pink and the red can really be worn with like a lot of different outfits. So I think that one would be my third. I would say Fire and Ice is probably the next one just because of all the history, because it's such a unique shade that it has cool and warm tones in it, it's just so, fascinating to me and I love that. It probably with the history and with the very unique shade might be my number one for those reasons but I'm trying to think about like actual wearability and how much I'll reach for it. It probably would be the other ones ahead of that one. And then last place I would say is love that red which is the first one but it doesn't mean by any means that I don't like it like it's really pretty it's just again I don't lean for the corally shades as much except for like in the spring and summer so I love all of these I just think that for me that's kind of the order that I would choose but I am so excited that I got to try all of these I've seriously been on the hunt for enough to make a long video for a while so I'm glad I found five of them I'm gonna keep searching for more because I'm just fascinated that they have been around since the 1950s I think that is so cool let me know your thoughts on these and other the whole Mac discussion and everything I'd be very interested to hear your opinions about this as well and like should companies be keeping their classic shades or should they be doing away with the old and just you know trying to stay fresh with the new formulas and new shades if you enjoyed this video i hope that you will subscribe and give it a like it does really help out my channel if you're already subscribed i hope you'll hit the notification bell so you get notified when i upload new videos and i hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day love you guys bye